I am violist and composer Jessica Meyer, and you are watching the Artists Forum. Welcome to the Artist Forum. I'm your host, Elliot Torres. My first guest today is a violist and composer who recently released her new album, Sounds of Being. I'm pleased to be joined by Jessica Meyer. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so what drew you to play the viola? Well, I always say that the viola found me instead of me finding the viola. I started off when I was five just teaching myself how to play the piano and my my father uh, is a folk singer, blues singer, so I was always strumming a guitar. Uh, but growing up in Long Island, we were very fortunate to have music programs. And so in fourth grade, you're asked, what instrument do you want to play? And, and me, like everybody else, said, I want to play the violin. <clears throat> and they came back to me and they said, you know what? We ran out of violins, but you're tall, so we're going to give you the viola. <laughs> and so that's where it all started. And then what, uh, what does, how did you decide that you wanted to continue pursuing that? I had one of those big, touchy-feely, aha moments in my um, school orchestra, and we were playing Memory from Cats. And I remember I was, n I was nine. Yeah, no, fifth grade. I was 10. And I was playing, and I said, that's it. This is what I want to do, because I wanted that feeling that, of playing as, many, you know, as much as possible. So. And what is it about the uh, what is it about the music and the, the sound that uh, speaks to you? I think it was uh, really about the emotions and how composers, uh, especially Andrew Lloyd Webber, is able to just capture that the feeling of that song, what that you know what that cat was singing about. Um, in just the intervals that he used and the melodies that he would create and I just remember playing it and the harmonies that he would use to you know build everything up and I just the visceral uh, process of playing really spoke to me and had sort of a direct inside to my emotions and I guess now that I think about it I realize that that's mainly why I write is because it's a way for me to process all that I'm feeling and also, you uh, you continued this on, and you attended uh, Juilliard. Mm -hmm. And what was that process? And you know, well, it's interesting because in high school, I, since I I knew I was going to be a musician, I passed out as many classes as I could. So by by junior year, my day was three hours long. You know, and so I I, I spent most of my time in the computer music lab just writing music on the computer. That's when Apple's first started to you know, have user-friendly uh, programs and MIDI keyboards and everything. Right. And I would just write these Mannheim Steamroller-esque Yanni soundscapes to myself um, based on whatever teenage angst I was experiencing <laughs> at the moment. And uh, I spent most of my time doing that. And then I started to uh, win awards. and uh, I won an Apple computer for my for my lab uh, because of a piece I wrote for viola and computer orchestra and and so I wrote a lot and but then my senior year when you're auditioning for conservatory you kind of have blinders on and you're just practicing 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 and especially to get into a place like Juilliard right um, so when I got to Juilliard all of that creative time was basically gone because I had to learn discipline and you know there are definitely some students that have an easier time with that and I had a harder time leaving home and going from the discipline of or the structure of a typical high school day to completely unstructured time uh, so I was 
I was lost there for a while until I found my footing and developed a practice regimen so I can get better. But it was definitely a long, long, long time before I started writing again. So, and as I, as I mentioned, you recently released Sounds of Being. Right. So it must have been very liberating to have a creative project, uh, you know, come from all the all the work that you put into uh, into your music. And so, what was that process like? Well, um, what had happened was that I had little outlets of creativity over the years. I, after graduating from Juilliard and playing some auditions and realizing that I didn't really want an orchestra job and I wanted to stay in New York, uh, my, my creativity was really fueled uh, through uh, my teaching artist workshops that I, I would regularly uh, be sent out on behalf of Lincoln Center and work with children to go prepare them to see concerts and that's all me coming up with activities in my head about how I'm going to get them from A to B so that they can go listen to some Beethoven. Mm -hmm. um, and or I'd be improvising once I finally you know, got out of my conservatory brain and felt free enough to improvise. That was a creative outlet for me. And I started writing music with children. Um, and then I also have started different businesses. So like entrepreneurship for me is like a creative outlet. But there became a very clear moment uh, while raising my son where I felt I really needed something more of an emotional creative outlet to sort of process all that I was going through as a parent. So that's when I immediately found a piano to shove in my tiny apartment. That's when I started hanging out with some singer-songwriters and I saw Reggie Watts one day perform in Brooklyn with his looper and that was, the, the, that was it. <laughs> I'm like, I want that, where do I buy one? Because I could do all these things at once and I could do it by myself and, and I could mess around and so that, I, I saw him in Brooklyn, I think, wow, it's five years now. And I only I wrote uh, Duende, which is one of the pieces you're going to hear today. And I wrote one other piece. Uh, and it was just nagging in my head that I really should be writing. And But it, I guess I just wasn't ready. And then there just became this point where I realized I need to write. I need to write all the time. And it's important of who, a part of who I am. So that's when I started writing a whole bunch of tunes for viola and the pedal, and that's where the CD comes from. And what, uh, in terms of your writing, uh, the songs and everything, what is the creative process for that, in terms of, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. Um, they're really triggered by very specific uh, moments in my life. Uh, so the whole concept of this album is uh, a series of pieces that take you on a journey between different emotions um, and they were all um, experienced during very specific moments in time and so when I would have one of these moments that would really just start the ball rolling. Um, I have not yet developed a practice where I'm writing every day. Um, it seems to come in fits and starts which seems to be fine because uh, because sometimes the piece has to wait for the right life experience to happen before it comes out. Uh, and so, so basically, like there are some songs in here like, hello, I, I, there was something that happened the night before, and then wham, in two hours the next day I wrote it, and done, it was easy. you know. And then there are other pieces where the, the first piece on the CD is called Getting Home, I Must Be, because I was out of town a little too long, and I was anxious to return to my son, and I was on a plane, and this melody just popped into my head because I was anxious mm -hmm. and then I just you know as you know as a writer either you stop what you're doing <laughs> and write it down or you let it you know kind of roll around for a while and then you try to get it another time so I was lucky that I was on a I was on a cheapo flight with no TV and no, <laughs> no Wi-Fi so I just had to grab something and write it out um, so yeah that's what the process is like it's either you know grab it when you can um, and and so, so really, in a way, this CD is chronicling a, a series of life events for me uh, and, how, and what, how I use sounds to sort of process those. Okay, and also uh, this album, in terms of, I mean, putting out an album is a daunting process, and I'm sure in you know, the, land, the music landscape, the way the music industry is. Mm -hmm. So how was that for you in terms of putting out an album? And uh... I feel like... Um, there's a chicken and the egg issue. Some people create an album just for an album's sake and 
have little intention of performing it live. I, for me, was looking for a, a set to play live, and I feel like I needed 45 minutes of material for me, uh, you know, and then plus a little talking, so 45 minutes to an hour of material so that I can go places and perform the show as a concept. Um, so for me, I just thought I need enough tunes and I need enough contrasting material for it to be interesting to the audience. Um, so once the first five tunes were you know, written, or four of them, I, then I had to start thinking, well, what, what kind of vibes and moods should the other tunes be so that there's enough contrast? Because I certainly have enough you know, angst-ridden stuff in there somewhere, so I sort of needed some contrasting material. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's, that's how it started to become an album. But I, I really think of it as a live experience first. Um, and that transaction that you have between you and an audience and that energy. Um, and really, the album is just a documentation of that. Okay. And also, when, you are, when you're performing and when you're performing this work in front of an audience, like, what goes through your mind? I, you know, being classically trained, mm -hmm. uh, there was so much of my life being spent trying to be perfect, you know, uh, and and a lot of my colleagues are, you know, doing the thing and they're doing a lot of auditioning and things like that. And the perfectionism sometimes usurps just the sheer trying to communicate something without words on the stage. Uh, and so my goal in performing these is just to somehow take these emotional journeys and make it as immediate as uh, possible for whoever's listening to me. And for me to feel free enough in the moment so I could just be in that place and just transmit it through sound. So I'm looking forward to hearing uh, you perform your first piece. Mm -hmm. uh, can you go ahead and introduce it to uh, for our viewers? Sure. Uh, it's called Source of Joy. And I basically wanted to write a piece that uh, had all of my favorite kinds of sounds in them, uh, in it, and sort of takes the listener on a journey of your, the how to get going and how to really get to that moment where you're doing all the things that you want to be doing in your life. Okay. Um, so, and the joy that comes with that. Nice. All right, Jessica will now perform Source of Joy.
That was amazing. Very uh, intense. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, I really had a lot of fun just coming up with uh, sort of like anti-viola sounds because my uh, my viola is mostly associate with, uh, associated with these dark and moody sounds, and I wanted to find a piece that was just really light and buoyant and sailing, and so... And everything you did, it's very creative. And uh, what um, I mean, what drew you, drew you to doing that in terms of you know coming from a classical background? Um, I spent many years here in New York playing contemporary classical music, which uh, has been being in an ensemble where composers have asked me to play my viola in lots of different ways, crunchy ways, light ways, whispering ways, drumming ways. And, but, um, but I also am a sucker for a great bass line and, and a groove and stuff like that. So I really wanted to take those two very different things mm -hmm. and sort of put it together. Um, and not, not all of my pieces are particularly groovy, but I think the sort of a more uh, tonal, uh, you know, harmony with rhythms, but yet some sounds that might be uncomfortable for a while. Um, but I love just, I love thinking of the viola as uh, a large palette of colors and how to just get a lot of different kinds of sounds and putting them together in different ways. It's definitely a very uh, contemporary approach. What's the reaction been from, let's say, people who are still, you know, the classically trained that uh, see you perform this? What's the, the what's been their reaction? In the classical music uh, community, it's funny. Our, my first CD review came out, and they reviewed it as this very vivid and edgy new music album, which is funny because it's so also groovy and so not really the really edgy stuff that I play with my ensemble. But I think um, people hear it as a very orchestral experience. Because um, most people use loop machines uh, in, in a rock band where you got one rhythm on top of another rhythm and some sort of you know uh, groovy hypnotic thing on top of that. It's mostly used for that kind of layering, but I just use it in a very different way. Um, and I think that's the thing with uh, new uh, ways of playing is that it's hard to just sort of put it in a box. So I think that's the thing I struggle with right now is talking to presenters to try to explain what I do. It's not, it's not exactly classical, it's not, a cla it's not really jazz, it's not really <laughs> new music, it's not really world music, but if you put a whole bunch of stuff together, that's kind of what it is. Right. Um, and you just sort of have to hear it. So I think, um, you know, I think People are responding to it mostly as a music that is expressing something emotional, and they're mostly connecting it to that as opposed to trying to label what it is. Um, but yeah, but that's that's definitely a struggle. Now you're going to perform uh, your other song. Mm -hmm. uh, we should please introduce it. Sure, uh, it's called Duende, and it was inspired by a time when. I was studying a lot of flamenco music and was living in that sort of Andalusian land and thinking about flamenco dancers and their sort of their mojo on the stage. So nice. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks.
I felt that that was even uh, more intense than the other one, and that you definitely, I definitely saw the emotion in it. Yeah, it, it's, it was written during a really interesting time of transition in my life, and so um, I decided to just pour it all in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, just watching it, uh, like I said, it, I felt the emotion, and I'm sure that people would uh, love to see you uh, perform live. Do you have any upcoming shows? Sure. Um, I'm going to perform this whole album, Sounds of Being, at Cornelia Street Cafe on February 23rd. Um, and opening up for me is another uh, uh, string player. He's a bassist named Florent Guy, uh, who also uses loop technology. Um, and on March 12th, I'm going to be at Spectrum, uh, performing one of my pieces and a whole bunch of other pieces. Nice. So yeah. people have uh, several opportunities to see your work. Yeah. All right, perfect. If you'd like to learn more about Jessica Meyer, please visit her website at jessicameyermusic.com. If you're interested in purchasing her new album, Sounds of Being, you can do so at iTunes, Amazon, and CDBaby.com. I'm Elliot Torres, and I'll see you next time on The Artist Forum. <laughs>